all, this is Cindy. I'm the Tireless Tangler, and you've arrived at day 78 of the 100 Days of Zentangle Project 2020. Thank you all so much for being with me today. Our tangle is going to be this lovely little grid pattern called Cathedral. It is by Kathy Berenger, CZT, and uh, I, I am in love with this, I'll tell you. I think this is such an elegant, lovely little pattern, and I don't stress out when I draw it. And so um, my problem was this is going to take about 10 minutes, and I didn't want to shortchange you at all. So I was trying to think, what could I do to make this uh, really stand out? And what I decided was that I'm going to use an ink tense background. And so... Um, what I want to do today is prepare the tile first and then dry it off and then tangle over it. So uh, before you do things like this, my suggestion is to uh, either use uh, the type of paper that you're going to use or the back of your tile. Uh, these Zentangle tiles are awesome, so uh, there is no bleed through. And uh, test your colors out that you're planning to use together. And what I discovered, this is a navy blue, and this is cad yellow, cadmium yellow, and this is a deep blue. And of course, all of my really awesome colors are packed away somewhere and I haven't been able to find them. But I think I'm going to choose, I like the more bluish tone with yellow, so I'm going to, these remind me of uh, the blue bonnets they have down in Texas. So, um, uh, I'm going to use these two, which are deep blue and cadmium, 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 okay, cad yellow. That's why I call it that. That's what I'm sticking with, okay? I think uh, what I'm going to do first is wet this down a little bit, and I still have a little bit of yellow uh, on my brush from that other, from the other tile, but that's not going to matter because I'm about to add... I'm going to go ahead and wet this down. I really want something less planned and more organic. Uh, so I wanted to drop, I'm going to go ahead and drop the color in from the tip of my paintbrush like I do sometimes. And if the surface is already damp, then we get some interesting looks when the color spreads. And so uh, if I can keep my brain engaged today, no promises. I'm just going to dab in some, some uh, little spots of color here. What I'm looking for is something that's very unplanned and organic. Something that um, runs the divide between bright and uh, sort of uh, serious. I, I don't know if you can call a color serious, but I suppose you can. I mean... We've got black for that. Lots of serious for that right now. We do not stand for racism. Not in this house. We believe people's hearts are what are important, not the color of their skin. All right. Um, okay. I don't know why I'm not just making this whole thing yellow because that's really what I like. That whole negative space thing. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is clean off my brush, give this a couple of seconds under the hair dryer, and then I'm gonna come back in and add the blue. It's still a bit damp down here, but uh, now let's, but hopefully, hopefully we have gone, dried this enough to make our ink permanent. And now, I'm going to do the same thing. Oops, that doesn't look right. Hang on. 
Now I'm going to do the same thing. I've got lint going on here. And dampen my tile. Let me see if I can get rid of that. I should be able to lift that out here since it's dry. Okay, welcome to my OCD part. <laughs> okay, so let me just dampen this again and uh, hopefully the colors will not run. And I'm just going to put water here and there. And remember that the reason I used the ink tints uh, colors and the reason I dried this was so that that would allow the ink to become permanent. All right, so now the yellow should stay the same and not mix with the blue. Let's find out. That's a pretty mix. Just dab anything you don't want out with a paper towel. Some of these are looking a little bit more green than others. We've still got most of the essence of our blue, I think. And if it turns a little greeny, that'll be all right too. I like the little bits of blue that came down here. Um, let's see. We want to dab some more in here. Make it a little bit more intense. All right. Okay, so that's much more organic, much more um, just dumped in there than this one was going to be. And I can still activate all of this and do the same basic thing, but this was just too uniform for what I really was looking for. Now, um, I'm going to come in here, dampen this and draw out some of these spots that are really dark in here. Okay, so this is what I have, and I'm going to dry this really quickly, and we're going to be ready to roll. So Cathedral is a grid-based pattern, and it is based on a square grid. So I'm going to set up my square grid in ink, as is on the step out. Okay, so square grid. Then what we're going to do is we're going to put in a dot, an inked dot in the corners. Okay, and I'm just going to do these top two boxes first, and then we're going to talk about how we can turn this around to make different things, okay? So then uh, you're going to want to divide each of these sections in half with another dot. Yeah? 
then divide it again. This is one method of getting these evenly spaced, okay? Then come down on the side to about the midpoint and draw in your dot. And then parallel on the other side. That's sort of parallel. It's parallel enough for me, okay? Now you're also going to add an extra dot here and divide this section. But we are not, I repeat, not going to do anything on the bottom, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to find a center point right here, okay? And we're going to connect all of these um, dots to the center. We're going to start with a straight line. Okay. Now, in the step out, I believe they go out from here. For me, it is easier for me, and again, this is my way, not in the step out. It is easier for me to next go to the bottom two and put a nice curve in these that matches each other. When I go out from the center, then I frequently don't have the curve here that I like. And so if I do it this way, then I can sort of match my curves up between the sections, okay? Then all we have to do is fill in with curved lines to each one of these dots. And see if I start down here, then I can guide them curve-wise the way I want them to go. And we should <laughs> have a fairly even result, okay? So I'm gonna repeat that over here. Now, the reason I waited is because I didn't want your dotting to get confused, okay? But on the bottom here, we have two choices. We can put these in the same direction or we can turn them upside down so these points will come together. So I'm gonna do one example of each on each side of here, okay? So on this side, I'm going to turn my tile upside down, okay? Make my midpoint dot here add my corner dots, put my side mid dots, and you can do these in any order you like, as long as you can remember, you know, what you're doing. So now I'm going to come from the same point here, and I'm going to make my straight line, and I'm going to put my little side pieces in. And again, you can do that however you like in whatever order, ever order works for you. Okay, so that's what we will have if we turn this upside down, all right? Now, if we do it uh, back to back, um, it will look different. <laughs> we'll put our dots in up here. It'll be like moving this and putting another one like this down here. Okay. And so that will look like, here's our center dot. Here's our corner dots. This one's the side dot. Okay. And we'll add in here, 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 and here. We're just bisecting each, uh, we're just dividing each section in half, okay? And so our bottom point would come up straight here and curve. It's not 
quite as nice as the other ones have been. But this is just an example, so it'll be all right. Okay, so one thing I might want to play with at some point is doing these uh, opposite on a row or on a, on a complete tile and see how that ends up. For today, I'm going to stick with a configuration that looks like this, which I love. And um, we're going to see what happens. So I think this is going to look really beautiful on this tile. The only thing that I'm going to change up from this to this is I'm going to draw my grid line in pencil. Okay? I like the, um, you still have those square grids, but uh, I like the freedom of not having these lines here so that you get a more open, airy feeling. So uh, that's just a personal preference. You may do it however you like. Okay? So I'm going to grab my pencil and draw in my grid. Okay. I am taking my time with this. I'm learning how to do these better. <laughs> learning to leave the sides open. Yeah, these are actually, for me, these are actually pretty good squares. Now, one other thing I want to play with and I won't do today is to um, play with this with uh, Wonky Grid. Um, I really want this down here. Simba. Simba. I don't think I need to erase that. I think uh, I may come in and erase it. We'll see. So what I'm gonna do now is come along here on this top uh, square, uh, on these top squares, and I'm gonna put my dots in uh, on the top on the top part of this, okay? Uh, so just like this, I'm gonna start with my corner dots. And by putting my grid line in in pencil, what I've done is make the dots the the um, organizing force here instead of the grid pattern, a uh, grid lines. Okay, so now I'm going to put in my midpoint dots. Trying to get those straight across from each other. And it's me, so limited success with that. Okay, now I'm going to divide my tops in half. Okay, then I'm going to go through and put dots in all, uh, dividing all of these sections between. Take your time on your dots, ink them nicely so that your finished product will be nice and neat. Sorry, I've got the hiccups. <laughs> Trying really hard not to jerk every time I do that. It's hard. Oh, I think this is gonna be so beautiful. And I may do a little shading with a colored pencil, we'll see. All right, so now I think I'm going to go through and mark my midpoint with a tiny dot here on each one of these. Because we're bringing all the lines in there, it's going to obscure that anyway, so it won't matter. Okay, so now I'm going to start with my straight center line. And 
Yeah. And I'm going to put in my side ones with just the perfect curve. Sorry, I'm on a roll now. Mm -hmm. And that's a good way to do that because you're making the same stroke over and over. going to add our extra lines. Alright, pretty pretty. I just felt like since we were, um, since this is very simple and not very dense as far as uh, busy with lines and such, um, it's very light and airy. I thought something fun on the background might be just the thing for this. And if I want to, I can always come back in with my ink tints and add a little bit more color now that it's dry again. Like if I wanted to brighten the yellows, I could do that. But that's why I'm thinking about using a colored pencil because I think I can use like a, a polychromos or a colored or a Prismacolor or something in a yellow uh, in a bright blue. I might be able to uh, brighten up some of those spots just a little bit. I'm gonna have to be careful though because I don't want to use so much colored pencil that I'm obscuring uh, the line work in any way and uh, particularly if I use Prismacolors uh, that will definitely happen. So this might be a good time for me to get out my polychromos pencils and try them out. We'll see what happens. Okay, so on this next row I am going to turn my tile upside down, okay? Or, let's do it this way. Let's skip this row and do this row exactly as we've done this one, okay? That, I think that's going to be less confusing with the dots. All right, so corner dots. Then midpoint dots on the sides and on the top. I'm getting in a hurry, I need to slow down. Okay. Now I'm going to add all my dividing dots. So divide each of these little sections in half. And in theory, these dots are supposed to be the same size. I'm not sure that's what I'm getting in practice, but in theory, they're supposed to be the same size. The dot placement is one pattern. The, the lines uh, are another part. This, this is very simple, very easy to draw, and very zenful, and I love the light, airy feel it has without being, um, I don't know, boring. It has a lovely, a lovely quality to it, a lovely, elegant quality, I think. Let's see, I adjusted these lines and I want to make sure I'm doing the right one. Let me get my center line in so I won't be confused. I think that's right. If it's not, it's about to be right, isn't it? Now I'm going to add in my side dots, side lines. It's actually not a football term. Silence are a football 
I know. This wasn't meant to be a football term, though. Now we're going to add in all of our radiating lines. Okay, so now we're going to turn our tile upside down and we're going to do the exact same thing in the exact same way. Okay, so we're going to start at the top. Let's see. I think I'm going to even this line out as I place my dots, so don't get confused by what I'm doing. So now I've got my dots in each corner. I'm going to add my mid side dots, my mid point side dots. Okay, and I'm going to add in my, oh, I forgot this one, didn't I? Midpoint on the top. Try to space them as evenly as possible. Uh, if you get them out of whack, then your lines sort of look out of whack. Not the end of the world. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just try to get them as close to in the middle as possible. You see what I did wrong here, right? I fixed these two, but uh, didn't leave the rest of them in the right place. Well, we're going to find out what happens. It's always an adventure here. Sometimes I wonder about my brain. <laughs> it's going to be fine. You just wait and see. All right, so I've got my midpoint to start, so I'm going to start with my straight line. up to the dot in the middle, or in my case, straight-ish, okay, or slanted. <laughs> and I'm going to do the side curves into the center. All right, whoa, I forgot what I was doing here. Side curves into the center, Cindy. I really love this pattern. I love the way it looks, and I hope you guys will too. I almost decided not to do it after I had decided to do it because it's so simple, uh, and there's not much you can do with it after it's drawn in as far as embellishing it and such. However, the finished look is just so lovely that I couldn't resist it. This is going to be entertaining. Yep, entertaining. So I'm really thinking about that wonky grid because I think it might be fun. But on this one, I didn't want to disturb the simple elegance of the pattern, and this is truly an elegant pattern. 
And I really like elegance. I, I think it's elegant. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll, I'll stop. All right. So aside from the tops here, not being just super, um, we're good to go. Now, uh, down here, we're it's gonna be easy because all of our top dots are in. All we have to do is our side divisions. So one on the center point or the middle point of the sides. And one dividing that. And we've got our middle point already, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw my straight line. And I'm gonna curve in my side lines. Trying my best to make that curve pleasing. And meeting with varying degrees of success. At this point, you want, to, you want to think about the overall effect that you're going to get. And so when I do that, then of course I draw my line wrong. <laughs> so stop worrying. Focus on each stroke of the pen. Either dot down to center or center up to dot, whichever way is more comfortable for you. There is no one way to do this. There's only your way. Oops. Isn't this pretty? I just love it. Here. Now, isn't that lovely? I just think this is so pretty. So now, there's a couple of things uh, that we could do um, for shading. And I actually think I want to find my, I either want my blue, I have a really pretty blue polychromos that I wanted to use, but I, I can't put my hands on that. I think what I'm going to use is a uh, peacock blue Vera Thin and a canary yellow Vera Thin. And I'm just going to um, enhance the color a little bit, but with the peacock blue, I'm gonna come through here right at the base and just add a touch of color to sort of darken this where the lines are coming in together where they converge. I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of darker color right here. And remember, I can blend this out or not, depending on what I want. And peacock blue is primarily bluish green got a little green in it, which I figured would work real, really well with the mishmash of colors we've got going on here. This will just sort of solidify the base, darken some of this so that the any inconsistencies in the line, the, the way the lines were drawn are um, sort of subdued. And 
and I chose to use the Varathins instead of Prismacolors because I did not want to obscure my lines. And since uh, the nature of Prismacolors is extremely opaque, meaning that it covers um, uh, almost completely, then I did not want to use those and uh, have my lines need to be either drawn in again or obscured. And these are much more, these Vera Thins are a much more transparent pencil. And so I think, um, I think this is going to work well. And I can blend this with a Tortillon, uh, which I cannot do, of course, with a regular Prismacolor. So um, we'll see once I get this color in how this goes. Just a little bit, and I'm just darkening this this spot down down deep where the lines are converging. All right, one more. a brighter blue but uh, let's blend this and see how we do let me find my sort of heavy-duty paper stump here since that'll work better than the little tortillons for this well I can't find the other one but this one should work just fine I think it'll just sort of consolidate what we've got here. All right. I actually really love these spots where I've got some natural um, hard spots on the color. It gives a lot of visual interest. I didn't want it to be all too smooth. Now, I am scrubbing fairly vigorously on the tooth of the paper, so I understand that uh, I'm not going to be able to do this, put much more on here after this. I may get a brighter blue and come in over this. I really didn't intend for my blues to be uh, quite so neutral here. I really wanted them to be bright. But uh, as a first step, uh, that works fairly well. Now, um, grab this blue. A light cerulean. That, let's see how that goes. Let's put that in. Let's see how that's so match. Or if it'll help us at all. Not sure it will. Might blend some of the colors up. What I really wanted this for was bluing up some of these darker green spots. But I'm not sure. I might need something heavier duty which would sort of defeat my purpose. So, I'm just push this in a couple of spaces and when I add my yellow here in a second that's going to have the opposite effect of bluing <laughs> it's just gonna green everything again so I'm not gonna spend too much time on this and again it might be easier if I just dotted in some more ink tins color uh, for the yellow in fact I might just do that. In fact, let's just do that. It's not something I normally do because when you put um, um, something over the ink, it I don't I like my ink to look crisp and clean. What did I do with my yellow? There it is. Uh, I like my ink to look crisp and clean, and so uh, when I when I um, do stuff over the ink, then I don't like that. 
but I think with ink tints that may work okay. So I'm just uh, loading up my aqua brush, my water brush with a little bit more cad yellow, cadmium yellow. And I'm just going to dot this in in a couple of spots. Doesn't look very bright, does it? Hopefully I'm not picking up any ink um, pigment. So that would be unfortunate. Well, that's not nearly, it's brighter, but I'm not sure I like it. Uh, let me put in a little bit over here. I wonder if I'm picking up pigment from the Micron. I'm doing my very best not to scrub across the ink and just dab it down onto it because I don't want to lift any pigment from from with the water from the ink on the pens pens all right starting to talk southern again no there's not anything wrong with that I just it's a personal issue okay leave me alone <laughs> Just kidding, guys. I don't mind my accent in and of itself. Uh, what I do mind is not being uh, able to be understood because uh, my words are so heavily uh, accented. So, yeah. I may wish I had left this yellow off. It's fairly dark. But it's certainly... Um, certainly more dynamic and I may dab some more blue and we'll see what happens. I'll just leave this and see what happens. It's definitely got a lot more zoom with the with the extra color in. that so let's dab in a tiny bit more blue I'm gonna make sure my paintbrush has got the yellow off then we will be putting in green won't we yes indeed okay this dark here. So I think I'm going to try to lift some of this color out. Yeah, that's better. Uh, I'm going to take some of this back out. Okay. Alright, so now let this dry for just a sec and I'm going to come in and shade just a tiny bit uh, with my pencil or my Verithin. I haven't decided yet. Or my gray pencil. One of the three. <laughs> uh, let's do... Let's just use graphite because I know that will spread fairly easily. 
So I just want, normally, if I were shading this with a, with a pencil, I would put my graphite first in these spots, but I don't necessarily, ooh, picked up some surface there. That is called pilling, P-I-L-L-I-N-G. It's when the paper, surface of the paper, the tooth of the paper pulls up and starts uh, peeling off into little balls. So let's make sure this is dry. Before you, if you're doing ink tints or watercolor, make sure that your tile is dry before you start shading with a pencil. I think this spot over here is good. Where I'm gonna shade is just on the inside of the paper next to these drawn in elements. I'm not sure this will be effective or any good or anything like that. And I'm not sure the surface can take any. You know, in, in fact, I think I'm going to leave it be. So the last thing I'm going to do here to finish this up, because because uh, I notice already that the, that the surface of the paper is really worn down, and if I scrub any more at it, it's, it's uh, gonna pull up and I'm not gonna be able to fix it. So I think I'm gonna leave it where it is for now, and uh, I'm going to come in with my jelly roll, if I can find the right one, and put a little dot of white right on the center of some of these, of all of these little balls. And I don't know how that's gonna look, so I'm gonna try it and see. And if, it, and if I don't like it, then I can come through with my black ink pen and just go over it, okay? So let's see what happens. This may distract from the pattern, and if that's the case, I'm not going to leave it. I don't like it. I don't like it. So I'm gonna go back in and ink over it and make it black again. And this is going to be where I leave it. Um, I may, um, I don't know, I don't know. I'm fairly certain that I'm not gonna do much more to it. I'm not sure it can take a lot more. And uh, I'm, I'm actually fairly fine with the way that it turned out. Um, yeah, I think I like it. So this is Cathedral for day 78 of the 100 Days Project this year. Thank you so much for being with me. And I can't wait to show you what I've got for day 79 tomorrow. Thank you so much for being with me today. And I'll see you then.